Hey guys, I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about something that I've been pretty passionate on and off for quite a while now. Um, back in the day, planar magnetic headphones weren't really around. It, no one had heard, heard of them. Uh, there was a thread on HeadFi that brought them to light and a lot of people were buying old headphones built in the 70s and the 80s and listening to them and modifying them with different various felts and different ear ear pads and and whatnot and uh, really enjoying the sound so I wanted to talk to you about uh, about these these are basically the shells of a bunch of uh, vintage um, planers um, here I'll show you a picture of uh, my shelf these are all headphones that I've modified uh, to have vintage planer drivers inside of them. Most of the uh, vintage planers that were made, uh, they didn't think they would have any bass if they put them in like a regular headphone enclosure, so they put them in like supper oral enclosures, and I don't like supper oral. They, they're uncomfortable. They, they start to hurt my ears um, after, after a while. Um, so yeah, basically I just wanted to go into the different models that I've built and kind of talk about their strengths and maybe why you would want to want to build them too. So uh, first we can talk about the, uh, the U70. Um, the U70 is a pretty good headphone. It's not the best. You can find U70 drivers for pretty cheap. Um, I found my pair uh, for like around $55, like shipped from the UK, which was crazy. So you can find pretty good deals on the U70s, but they're not, they're a little hazy compared to some of the other stuff. Um, they're just not quite as detailed and as, as sharp. They're, they're, on the warmer side, I feel um, they have pretty nice base. Um, they're a good headphone. I just feel like you'd be better off with something else. So that basically brings us to the next headphone, which is the YH1. Uh, it's pretty sharp. This compared to the U70, this is pretty pretty darn sharp. This is very good. For for the prices that these go for, these are very common. So you can get a YH1 or an HP1. It's actually the YH1 and the HP1 are the same headphone. You can get a YH1 or an HP1 for around, I want to say $60, maybe $70, like shipped and taxes. And for that price, after, like after you build the entire headphone, you can build an entire headphone for, well, it, de it depends. Because like to get the modding materials, um, it's better if you build more than one headphone because you're going to have so much of the modding material that you'll, you'll be able to build multiple headphones with what you buy. So if you only build one headphone, it sort of goes to waste. Um, so if you build... If you if you're able to get like a sample of the modding materials, uh, like a small sample somehow, I don't know, um, and keep your cost down, you can build them for around two hundred dollars probably a YH one, um, and yeah, it's basically just a better version of the U seventy. I like the tuning more, the upper mids, the the the, the mid range is more forward and um it sounds more natural to me uh sound staging when you transplant these drivers into angled and give them a nice deep pad um sound staging is incredible in my opinion it's it's really it's really really good um it gives it like a projected center image um which the center image is, is just, it's like in front of you instead of like most headphones, it, it sort of sound stages like through your head, whereas these headphones 
project it in front of you just a little bit and give you a nice sense of space. I'd say that the YH1 is probably the best bang for your buck. Out of all the headphones, I think this sounds the best for the price. Um, that brings us to the next headphone, which would be the HP1A. The A stands for anisotropic, so the difference between the HP1A and an HP1, uh, which is the same thing as a YH1, remember, uh, is the magnets. The magnets are a little bit stronger, um, and also the tuning is a little bit different. The tuning is a little bit closer to the YH100, which I haven't talked about yet. Um, it's like a little, it's like the YH1 is just effortless and natural and out there. And the HP1A is just a little bit repressed. Um, so you, you get a little bit more detail in, in some regions. Um, tuning the treble isn't quite as hot the, the treble is a little bit uh, more tame um, you could honestly you could boost the treble on the HP1A a little bit if you wanted but uh, it sounds pretty good flat um, and I think they're also I think the mid range is maybe a little bit smoother the YH1s and the HP1As they can be a little bit sibilant with the ear pads that I use. You can swap out the ear pads for something that isn't as sibilant, but I think it might kill the dynamics a little bit. Um, HP1As are, I, I bought my pair of HP1A drivers for $160, um, so that's quite a bit more. So if, if you can get a pair of YH1 or HP1 drivers, for you know sixty or seventy dollars, um, like a hundred dollars more. That's it's quite a bit, um, and they're not that much better, really. I, I you it, I wouldn't even call them better. I I would just call them a different flavor. Um, I might prefer them to YH ones, but YH ones are really really good. Uh, for the price and then that takes us to uh, YH100s. I have different ear pads on the YH100s. I have ear pads which are not as sibilant and this makes YH100s extremely tame. Um, they also have the most detail out of any of the headphones that we're talking about. Um, they are the most detailed. They're also probably the most forward in the mid-range they're the brightest. I think their tuning, it just sounds the most natural to me. As I keep, as the headphones keep getting brighter and brighter, it keeps on sounding better to me. And maybe that's just my preference. But uh, YH100 sound sound the best to me. Um, they're expensive. They're the most expensive of the bunch. You can find YH100s for anywhere from like 175 to like 275 dollars usually. Um, depending on condition and again we don't care about the condition of any of these headphones because we're just going to tear tear them apart and take the drivers out and put them in something nicer so if the headband is cracked and broken it doesn't matter or completely missing if it if it doesn't even have a headband it doesn't matter you know we're just taking the drivers um, so and then that takes us to the stragglers the ones that i haven't talked about so then there's yhd3s yhd3s are they're very good it's a little 40 40 millimeter driver they got nice base if you put them in an angled housing like the cd550 here um yeah it's got pretty good sound stage it's just a small image um so it sounds a little distant um but it can be nice with certain material. Sometimes it just fits and it's like, wow, that sounds really, really good. Um, they have like a very sharp attack. It's like the upper mids or something. It's like, there. sometimes it clicks or it ticks and it just sounds super sharp and edged out on it. Um, they can be a little bit sibilant though. So 
maybe different ear pads, I'm not really sure. Um, and then the the cost KHP 30Is that you that you saw those also have YHD3 drivers in them. Um, those don't sound as good. They don't sound stage as well. The bass rolls off. Uh, they're a little whitewashed. They they're just not as bold. Uh, they sound good. They're they're good, um, but they're not they're not that good. And then the CAD MH320s that you see here those have HP 50A drivers in them and HP 50A drivers are supposed to be similar to the YH2 but I'm not confident enough to say that it is a YH2 because I think YH2s measure measure a lot better compared to what mine measure like so I think YH2s are a different driver despite what I heard um, they sound okay they're not as detailed um, I'm, I'm guessing YH2s, I'm guessing anything below a YH1 just doesn't sound quite as detailed as the top dogs. Um, I think it gets more detailed as you go up the line. Uh, but YH3s and YH2s have the same drivers in them. And supposedly the YH2s and the YH3s have a warmer mid-range, uh, probably less sibilant, so maybe preferable for some. So, yeah, why would you want to build one of these headphones? Um, I think the YH1s for $200, if you can build it for around $200. Um, I think it, com it competes with everything in that price range. Uh, I think I think it probably beats everything in that price range. Um, if you're comparing it to like a DT880, I think it's got a little bit more detail. Um, I like the uh, the tuning a little bit more on the YH1. Um, again, if we're talking about like an HD6XX, like a Sennheiser. Uh, I think there's more detail. Uh, you probably have better bass extension. Um, so, like for certain genres, you, you're gonna get like real deep rumbles that that you might not notice with other headphones. Um, I just think it's a really great headphone. And then compared to something like a T50RP. Um, T50RPs are pretty, pretty good. I put them on and I'm like, ooh, this is like very smooth. There's like a, it's not, it's not like a blur, but it's just like a smoothness to them. They sound, they sound very done up, kind of like tuxedo, you know, tuxedo and bow tie kind of, kind of sound. Um, but then certain songs rub them the wrong way and they can sound like really plasticky and then the bass sometimes I get a weird sense from the bass. The bass is good. The bass is actually really good and there's there's a good amount of it actually like compared to the YH1s there's a little bit more bass. YH1s can take EQ so you can actually EQ the bass in YH1s like past T50 RP level um, but I think it's I think it's actually nice that the YH ones and all all of these headphones actually are kind of light on the bass because you can sort of tune it to your preference a little bit that way um, and it's never overdone um, unless you want it to be overdone I guess um, but yeah T fifty RPs I just don't think the detail is quite there I think YH ones are just a little bit more detailed and then the sound staging sound staging is like crazy good I've never heard a T50RP because T50RPs are like these big weird drive driver shape so it's hard to like angle angle them you could um, a manufacturer definitely could angle them and I guess you could just get angled pads but I've never really heard sorry I've never really heard T50RPs with uh, with crazy good sound stage uh, that competes with like any of these these headphones. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening, guys. If you like liked hearing about my headphones, if you like this video, 
uh, and you're considering building one, just let me know in the comments. Uh, I can post a, another video on how to build specific specific models, what to look out for, things to avoid, etc. Uh, so yeah, just let me know. Alright, take care guys.